What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisor.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Tuesday. It is July 23rd. We are back with another video for you. A little over a week left of July, which is crazy. We're going to get into August, which is fantasy football drafts. We're going to get it all. If you guys are interested in some fantasy football drafts, some best ball, or like a DraftKings season-long tournament where you win every single week, email me, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. I'm just trying to get a little early, just an idea of how many people would like to play. So we've had it before. Um, it'd be like the top three. Uh, so each week, however many we get, hopefully more, a lot, but just, you know, normal DFS you're going to build your lineup, top three get paid, $5 a week, $10 a week, something like that. So if you guys are interested in that, we obviously have leaderboards at the end of the year. Whoever is in the top spots, the first place prize would be a free year of FTA+. Plus. The Actually, the first place prize would be a uh, free... Uh, what, did we do it last year? I think we did. Lifetime pass, $500 lifetime pass. Second place is a free year and third place is a free month of FTA plus. Now, if I am in the top three, I get whatever spot that is. So you got to beat me. So we did that last year. So we're looking to do that again. So if you're interested, hit us up. So that being said, it is a Tuesday. We have a ton of information to go over. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Kind of what we do is we break down every game. We look at the pitchers. We look at the batters. So um, we're going to do that. It's a longer video. If you want to see a shortened version in text form, the link is in the description for today's article, along with our sponsor, Outlier.bet. You can check that out down below. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And we have giveaways every single day. Two giveaways to be exact. One giveaway just because we hit a minimum of 50 likes on a video. And one giveaway just because we have a keyword somewhere. You type that keyword in there and you have a chance to win a free week there as well. Towards the end of the video, we're going to do Pitches Be Crazy. So the top five matchups for pitchers who have the best matchups for strikeouts against their opponent. And then at the end, we're going to give you the top 10 or all of the bats that have a 10 out of 10 matchup rating for today after doing simulations. So we do simulations every day. We're going to give you all of the bats that have a top uh, 10 out of 10 matchup rating there. So that being said... If you're new to the channel, we are going to have the giveaway real quick. You can win every single day up into a lifetime pass. So you just got to be there. You got to let us know if you guys want to win. Come back, like the video, be a subscriber. Sorry about that. That is an alarm to feed the child, the newborn that I just, we fed, I fed 30 minutes ago. So that being said, speaking of, we did have a pin of shame yesterday. This is the second pin of shame. Did not I haven't had one for a while. But we did have a pin of shame yesterday. We will see if they're a winner here today, which would be pretty funny. Um, but, yeah. So yesterday's video got over 100 likes. So someone's going to win a free month of FTA Plus. Had 115 likes. So that's how we win. Be a like of the video, be a subscriber, and leave a comment. If the video gets at least 50 likes, you have a chance at a free, a free week of FTA Plus. That is a week of M current MLB, PGA, NASCAR, MMA. Once NFL comes back and NBA, that, that's the free there as well. If the video gets at least 100 likes, you have a chance at a free month of FTA+. Plus. 150 likes is a chance at a free $200 a year, 200 or more likes on a video, a chance at a lifetime pass. Now, we haven't had a lifetime pass giveaway yet. We've been close. We have given away lifetime passes. Um, just trying to see a lot of like, you know, uh, thanks and congratulations for the baby over the weekend, blah, blah, blah. But the pin of shame, guys. The pin of shame. Hopefully it's still here. I haven't seen What's it going on? deleted or not. Um, yes, there we go. <laughs> and, and you guys have already seen it. Uh, do we really need to hear your personal, really, you not the only sports capper? I don't need you here, bud. Um... Pin of shame, though. Uh, but congratulations, being the pin of shame. Uh, great content breaks up the monotony. Uh, continue to personalize the experience. Dude's a bird and not a real one, too. Um, we had someone say, be quiet. Just imagine going to someone's house and telling them what to talk about or turn their TV. Uh, turn on their TV. 
it's so funny. Uh, thank you, though. Um, pin of shame. I don't want to do it, but when I see stuff like this, we we definitely will have the pin of shame there. So we are going to have the giveaways real quick before we jump into anything. So this will be whoever, whatever the comment is, will be the winner of the free month of FTA Plus. Even if it has the keyword, we're still going to re-roll it. And hopefully it's the pin of shame here. CNO forever. Congratulations. You did have, you've won multiple times. That's what I'm saying. Come back, leave a comment, guys. But CNO, just email me that uh, you saw this. So I know you saw this. And we'll get you set up for another free month. I believe you have like six weeks or five or six weeks pass wise here so far. So again, you can win every single day. You can win back to back days. It doesn't change. Now, the keyword yesterday was tired because I had two hours of sleep, I think, total, and then I had a nap. Um, but yeah, let's see who the winner for using the keyword here for a free week. Brian Tate, thank you for congratulating, but you did not have the keyword. But come back tomorrow. I do appreciate your comment, though. Then we get in here. Snake Supreme. I don't think you've ever won. I think you're new to winning. If, if I recall, so email me dfshelp1 at gmail.com. That's dfshelp, the number one at gmail.com. And, and if you do have a username on the site, let me know. If you don't, let me know a username and email that would be good to set up. And we will get you set up for your free week. So be on the lookout and listen for the keyword for today. Now, we do have a lot of games, a full slate here. We've got a Coors game. Uh, the Red Sox have the best odds for implied run team total. There was a ton of runs yesterday. We saw it went to the 12th inning, and then Colorado walked it off. Um, you've got the Nationals that have the second best matchup here against the Padres, which might be a little bit surprising. You've got the Diamondbacks against Alec Marsh. That's a little surprising to me. I figured it'd be the other way around. You've got the Rockies going against Cooper Criswell. And then you've got uh, the Orioles against Kyle Tyler and the Yankees against Jose Quintana to kind of wrap up the top plays there. So, like I said, we're going to dig into everything. We're going to look at everything. It is day of, and we still don't have a like some of these pitchers, which is wild, and that's kind of what we're going to do. We're getting closer to the trade deadline. That will kind of screw people over a little bit because people are going to be um, possibly traded, so that is definitely something to look at. So, we've got a four-game early slate here. we got two Unfortunately, two games that might have some weather concerns. It's early. It is the morning, so a lot can change in the next 11 hours. I completely understand, but let's dig in here. So we got Detroit at Cleveland. Uh, it is not confirmed if it's uh, Joey Wentz going, uh, so we can't really talk about that much, but uh, I'm probably not using Joey Wentz here. Um and Curry, I'm probably not using Curry either. I'm probably using both teams, um, avoiding both of these pitchers, and looking at the bats in this one. And this is where I'll tell you, I'm just one person. I am not always right. I'm sometimes wrong. These are just digging in and the plays that I would use. If you want to change it up a little bit, if you want to have a discourse here, and you want to talk about different things, let me know. Let me know why you like this team or not. Or, if you want to check it out, in the description is the Discord link. We do help you out, and we do give core plays out there as well. <clears throat> so if we were to look at Detroit Bats against Xavion Curry, um, there's a little history here, not a ton. Uh, no home runs um, from people, but we do have RBIs. We do have some people hitting the ball well. Um, if I were to look at Detroit Batters at all, it would be Gio Urshela, batting 287 with four bombs. Uh, Matt Veerling batting 253 with uh, 10 bombs against righties. Riley Green batting 288 with 13 bombs. I love Winsteel Perez, 262 batting average, five bombs there. And if we are trying to look for a fifth one, maybe Colt Keith um, does have 10 home runs against right-handed pitching. So those would be the Detroit bats that I would look at. Cleveland bats, if it is Joey Wentz, I don't know if it is. Um, I'm still looking at uh, Jose Ramirez. I'm still looking at Josh Naylor. I'm still looking at Stephen Kwan. If it is a lefty, if I am trying to get those last two for a stack, definitely looking at Will Brennan a little bit, um, just depending. And I'm looking at David Fry here. Uh, Multi-position eligibility, and he's hitting well. 288 on the year with eight home runs, 859 OPS. 
20.5 K percentage, which is kind of in the middle there. Uh, does strike out, but if we can get a couple extra base hits or a home run, we're, we're looking pretty there. Um, the problem is the weather's a concern. So with this game gets played, that's awesome. If it, you know, it's delayed, we're not taking the pitching in this one. So we should be good here if the game goes on. Next game, Baltimore, Miami. Um, looking at this, we've got Albert Suarez versus Kyle Tyler. I really don't want Kyle Tyler. Um, I don't trust him. If you want to, when you see games like this and you make multiple lineups, you can always throw in that pitcher because everyone's going to be on the Orioles. No one's going to be on Kyle Tyler. You're going to get the ownership percentage. If you want to see the ownership percentages as well, that is on the cheat sheet on the website, fantasyteamadvice.com, under the MLB tab if you want to check that out. You can sign up $10 a week. We do have a uh, monthly pass for 30 we have a yearly pass for 200 and we have a lifetime pass for 500 as well so if you want to check that out definitely look it out we have a ton of information there and we you know hopefully help you bring home that bacon so looking at this tyler game logs um you know four starts isn't much his price being seven thousand, it is up there um second highest of the year a, a team that he should have didn't done well against he only went four innings against seattle with two home runs and they do strike out the most so he's probably not a pick that i'm gonna do I throw him in tournaments i'm okay with because maybe somehow baltimore just doesn't do anything i don't trust that I, i'd rather stack with baltimore here especially against right-handed pitching gunner henderson's got to be at the top of my list batting over 300 with 22 bombs against right righties Ryan O'Hearn's actually surprised this year. 276 batting average with 12 home runs against righties. You got Jordan Westberg, if he's in there, 11 bombs, 288 batting average against right handed pitching as well. Anthony Santander, uh, you know, only batting 249 against righties this year, but has 21 home runs and he's been absolutely on fire. Those would be the bats that I would, I mean, obviously you got Adley here as well, but he's only batting 224 against right handed pitching. If you want to see all the batter splits as well, um, you can check out our sponsor, which we're going to talk about, or you can check out the batter splits on the website under the MLB tab. So I'm not looking at um, Kyle Tyler at all. Then you got Suarez, 282 batting average. He's got a great average. When he pitches on the road, he's a little bit worse, but it's still respectable, 331. Um, coming off a bad game against Chicago, this is my problem. He has not pitched since before the All-Star break. Whether or not that affects him at all, that's kind of what we talked about in yesterday's video. That is a long time to have off. Obviously, they have bullpen sessions, but it's not real game action. You don't see the actual major leaguers there. Um, but had a good game against Oakland, good game against Texas, not a good game against the Yankees or Houston. So tournament-wise, I am okay with Suarez. I don't trust him in cash. He's never faced uh, Miami before, but if I were to look at Miami bats here, um, Josh Bell, but again, his name is being floated out there to be traded, so that's definitely something to look at. I think Berger, Jake Berger, has hits a Big Mac here today. I think he hits a home run. He's got 245 batting average with 10 bombs against righties. Otto Lopez would be a cheap option. I think a lot of people will be off of. I think Jesus Sanchez and Jazz Chisholm would be other ones as well. Now, Chisholm also in the mix to possibly be traded, so that could happen at any time. So be careful without, you know, don't just set a lineup this morning and then forget it with some of these plays because they could be traded, and that's a big fat goose egg and, those are never good. Then we have the Cardinals at the Pittsburgh. We've got Lance Lynn versus Paul Skeens. I don't want anything to do with St. Louis. Um, Paul Skeens comes in, 190 ERA, 89 strikeouts, started the All-Star game, looked great. Uh, you know, 40.6 against Milwaukee, went seven innings with 11 Ks. You're basically looking at a floor of about seven strikeouts for him. Um, going up against St. Louis, he's already faced him once this year, had eight strikeouts and 6.1 innings. Did not get the W, had 27.3 fantasy points. He is very expensive, 11000 but I feel comfortable paying up for that price there. So he's obviously my number one on the day. He's also my number one on the early slate. Bats really don't interest me in this game, to be honest with you. Um, I'm probably not using bats in this one, so I'm not really going to break it down. Again, once we do simulations, maybe these bats jump up and jump out to us. That is where I tell you, we have a ton of free information here on YouTube. We do have a ton of information on the website as well. So if I were to give out every single piece of information that we have, projections, simulations, all of that, 
these videos would be two, three, four hours long. I do not have time for that. I have a full-time job, um, you know, and now I have two kids, but uh, it's wild that I have two kids. Um, but yeah, um, if this was my full-time job, I, for sure, I could break it down for you. I could do everything for you. Um, but you know, small channel, small business, help us out. And by us, I mean me, my family, um, Clicking on the ads on these videos helps. Clicking on the articles help to go to the website. Clicking on the ads on the website help. I know they're annoying. They help out. Or I did notice a few people have bought some stickers down below. We have some merch there. That is awesome. No idea who you are. Um, if you do, if you have it, let us know um, if you bought some of that stuff. Uh, we may you know, tweet at us, at advisors underscore team, with the hashtag bringing home the bacon and a picture of your merch that you bought. If you tweet at us and I see it, we are going to give you some free passes away to FTA plus as well. So same thing. Um, stickers going to get you a free week. T-shirts going to get you a free month of FTA plus sweatshirts going to get you a free, uh, two free months of FTA plus as well. So doing some big things. Very excited. I do have eight weeks off of work coming up soon, I think in the middle of August. Um, and I'm really going to be pushing out NFL content. I'm going to be pushing those out soon too. Might make some videos today if I've got some time while little man is sleeping and my wife is sleeping. Um, so we'll see. We'll definitely see. Then we got San Diego at Washington. I don't trust Randy Vasquez. I would rather look at Washington and they have the second best matchup. Um, most runs scored here. Uh, with 5.16 as of the making of this video. So I am definitely on board with looking at Washington as well. Weather scares me a little bit, but we're going to take it. I don't trust Vasquez. Lowest price guy, 457 ERA. We've stacked against him. He didn't do bad against Atlanta and Arizona, but then he has a Boston game. Only one earned run, but only 5.4 fantasy points. Um, it's been It's been some time. Tournament-wise, I guess you could throw him in there because he is so cheap and it allows you... If you to go like Vasquez and Skeens, then you could do about 4,000 per batter, which isn't bad. But if I were to take Washington bats here, probably looking at Luis Garcia bat 290 uh, for sure. James Wood, I would definitely get him in there if he's there. Uh, Juan Yepes batting 364. I don't know if he's going to be in there because uh, he only has 33 at bats against righties, but he is there. Trey Lipscomb, another one. Only one home run, but batting 276. I don't mind him there. And obviously, you're making a stack cg abrams has to be in there i think riley adams is a player in there kyber ruiz this might be one where you might make multiple different washington stacks today and i don't i don't hate that at all um especially on a four game slate weather might be a concern you don't want to take pitching you want to take bats make sure these games are in here um if those two games get postponed or canceled not canceled postponed you got a two game slate and pretty cut and dry that most likely the top two pitchers on this early slate, Paul Skeens and Albert Suarez. You could even look at Lance Lynn because he does make the top five for pitches be crazy because Pittsburgh do strike out quite a bit. So we'll talk all about that uh, later on. So that is the early slate. The early slate is done right there. Now I do want to, before we get into the main slate, I do want to talk about today's sponsor, Outlier.bet. You guys have been with us, you know, and they've got a great product out there. And the link is in the description to sign up. Now, if you sign up using our link, you sign up, go through the seven day free trial, get the $30 uh, monthly pass. We are going to give you a free month of FTA plus on top of that. So what is that? What are we gonna check out? They have two different passes. One is 30 bucks and then their pro package is 130 a month. So you can check those out. You both you get a seven-day free trial for either. If you sign up and then you pay afterwards, show us which package you used and that you signed up with our link. We are going to give you a free month of FTA Plus because I, I, let's just talk about it. So they are, and you can just look at it, Outlier. Outlier.bet, they're on the App Store as well. I don't think they're on the Play Store right now. I'm not sure. But it, it filters in different insights for MLB. So the best odds. So Jason Hayward has failed to exceed 
uh, 0.5 RBIs in nine of his last 10 games. So if you want to bet the under, the best odds to bet that is on Caesars at 304. Then you got Kike Hernandez has failed to exceed uh, point, over 0.5 doubles in 18 of his last 19 games. So under one double, minus 700 on bet 365. So there's different books that you can look at um, from FanDuel down to Underdog. I wish I could play Underdog or Price Picks. Can't play it in my state for whatever reason. They got different platforms for DFS as well and sports books as well. So what I love to do is look at game by game breakdown. You look like the Cardinals at the Pirates. You can look at the starting pitcher, Skeens, 6-0 record. You can check it out versus St. Louis, zero earned runs per nine. Innings pitch, 6.1. Strikeouts, 11.37. Injuries, insights, you can check it all. You can go Cardinals bats against right-handed pitching. Wilson Contreras bat 279. Pedro Pajas bat 226. You can check it out. This is basically bringing in 10 different websites of different information, from betting odds to BVP to uh, each different sports book and what odds they bring, what props they bring, what EV, what boosts they bring. So, you know, if you want to look at NFL, Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen to each record over 10 and a half rushing touchdowns in the season. The best place for this boost, ESPN bet at plus 525. So we're already getting into future bets for NFL, but you guys are here for MLB. So let's look at props real quick. Today's props, what I would be looking at. I want to look at, for instance, Paul Skeens. So what I do is, depending on what you want to look at, all of his different props that have been oops, all of his different props that have been in, apply. I usually like to go um, strikeouts. So you come down here, you go to strikeouts, you go apply. You go over 7.5, under 7.5. The over, which he's had success against them before, 80% his last five games, 80% his last 10 games. Head to head, he's hit this 100%, one out of one. And then in 2024, 20, 73% of all of his starts, he's gotten at least eight strikeouts in those games. So they break it down. You can see the odds plus 100 on FanDuel, plus 105 on DraftKings, minus 106 on Caesars, minus 120 on BetMGM. So it's between FanDuel and DraftKings for me here. So this is just one little prop that you can look at. You can look at a ton of them. You can look at over under bases. You can look at everything. So check it out. You get seven day free trial, sign up using our link, get some free stuff from us as well. So outlier.bet is that site. They are the truth. So we have a main slate here, some more weather concerns, New York Mets, New York Yankees, weather there. We've got weather in Atlanta. We've got weather in Chicago. Um, or chances of weather in these places. Again, we are 11 hours away. A lot, th lot of things can change there. So we've got the top pitcher, Chris Sale, all the way down to Ty Block going against Boston at home. So let's break it down right now. So Mets, Jose Quintana versus the Yankees. Now this is in Yankee Stadium. Looking at splits-wise, he did not face them in their two games a month ago or whenever it was. Um, on the road, 479 ERA, not the best, a, a elevated ERA and lower fantasy points per game there. The Yankees, maybe they're starting to hit. I don't know. They, they did very well yesterday against Zach Littell. And now they have a juicy matchup here against Quintana. Looking at this, we can go down just to see in his career, 263 batting average, 45 plate appearance. So it's not a ton um, I would not be using that uh, at Quintana at all. If you want to use him for tournaments because the Yankees can strike out a bit, I'm okay with that. Um, but I'd still rather give the details to the Yankees. According to outlier.bet, um, on DraftKings, plus 136 to be New York Yankee run line over one and a half. Um, the over-under of eight and a half is minus 115 on Caesars and under eight and a half is plus 105 on ESPN bet, but I'd still rather take the Yankees bats in this one. Obviously Juan Soto had a monster game on Monday. Um, I would look at him. Uh, Austin Wells had a pretty good game and he's been very good the past few weeks that he's starting. I would definitely look at him. Judge, another one. Um, Volpe kind of came around yesterday, uh, did pretty well. I would definitely look at him. DJ LeMayu had a home run, but, you know, 
Only batting 118 against lefties this year. Ben Rice, I don't know if they figured him out, but again, uh, righties batting 136 on the year with one home run. Overall, Ben Rice batting 200 with six home runs. Maybe he had a little bit of run. Maybe he is out. I don't know. We'll definitely have to see. Another bat I would look at, Oswaldo Cabrera, if he gets the start. I don't know if he will, but if Oswaldo Cabrera is in this lineup, uh, he's a switch hitter. Uh, against lefties, batting 214. No home runs, but I don't mind him there. Um, Glaber might get the start here too, so he would be another one. So I don't like Quintana. I do like the Yankees. I do like Luis Heel here. Now, splits wise, he's already faced him once. This is when he was kind of in a down spiral a little bit. Uh, 1039 ERA in that game. Only went 4.1 innings, gave up five earned runs. They lost 12 to 2. Since then, he had one other bad game. And then against Boston and Baltimore, fantastic games there. Kind of what you want to look at, 317 ERA, maybe a little bit of blip. You know, start off very strong, a little bit of blips here. Maybe he's back. I do like this matchup for him against the Mets. I am not looking at the Mets' bats. Um, If you want to look at them, Francisco Alvarez has a home run in that game against them, one for one there. Uh, Lindor, batting 667. Uh, Harrison Bader against his former team, batting 301 against righties, you could definitely look at. Um... Vientos would be one, Pete Alonso, but I am looking at heel, and I am looking at the Yankees bats over everything else. Then you got Tampa Bay at Toronto. So you've got Sean Armstrong versus Jose Barrios. Tampa Bay offense, overall, they just don't scare me. I'm off of the offense. I am looking at Barrios a little bit. Um, it, yeah, that's where I'd be at, 8,100. Uh, splits-wise, he's already faced him once this year, six innings. Two hits allowed, six strikeouts. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something along the lines of that again. Um, Toronto bats against Sean Armstrong that I would consider and look at. You could look at Vlad Guerrero about 727 against him. Uh, against right-handed pitching overall, bat 296. Uh, Spencer Horowitz bat 316. Jimenez bat 308. That would be a very cheap option for you. George Springer might be an option here. 10 home runs and 241 batting average. And then... Dalton Varsho is more of a boomer bust pick. 10 home runs against right-handed pitching, but he only batted 197 against right-handed pitching. So kind of scares me a little bit. Um, I would look at Barrios here. I'm not looking at Armstrong. I'm looking at the Toronto bats. I'm not looking at Tampa Bay bats. Reds at the Braves. You got to be announced versus uh, Chris Sale. Chris Sale, obviously number one. 10,500. Very expensive, but he's you know he has a great matchup here. Uh, has not faced them this year. Um, 272 batting average or ERA at home, basically the same home or away there. So while he's healthy, he's fantastic. Uh, number one for me here on this slate, 10,500. I would still take him. I'm not looking at the Reds' bats. And then we look at, we don't know who the Reds are actually going to pitch, which kind of stinks. We, we're waiting. They think it's going to be Nick Martinez. Um, but the problem is, you know, he last pitched an inning so it might be an opener situation so we can't really go through it so once this is through then you'll kind of know who the Braves bats are that we like that is definitely something to pay attention to Um, that is why I tell you we don't have all the information in these videos go check out the website you know right around lunchtime depending when you watch this it should be out the picture should be out there so we should know uh, if it's a righty or lefty then we can kind of break it down by BVP we can break it down by batter splits as well so don't know if it's going to be Nick Martinez. Don't want to give you information. You kind of already know the Braves bats that we would look at. But again, definitely something to look at. We will wait until the news comes out that, that we are waiting for to see who the pitcher is. Phillies at the Twins. You got Zach Wheeler versus Simeon Woods Richardson. So Wheeler here, um, fourth highest priced pitcher on the slate. 270 ERA. Has not faced Minnesota this year. Um, coming off a great game against the Dodgers. A couple of so-so games here. At his price, again, you need about two and a half times value. So minimum 20 fantasy points out of him, which he is averaging over that this year. I would definitely look at Zach Wheeler. Um, if you are looking, yeah, I would look at Zach Wheeler. The The current roster for the Twins just hit lefties a little bit better. So that's definitely something that I want to see. Um, so I'm taking Wheeler. And then Simeon Woods Richardson, depending if you want to throw him in a tournament because no one will be on him. I get that because he's going up against Philly. It's definitely something to look at. But he's got 351 ERA at homes. It's a higher ERA. has not faced Philly this year. 
kind of down. At, you know, we need 20 plus fantasy points. He's not been doing it. Philly bats that I would look at: Trey Turner, Alec Bohm, Kyle Schwarber, Bryce Harper. Obviously, the the top guys. Then you want to find a little bit of value, maybe a Bryson Stott and Mundo Sosa. If you guys are trying to find that fifth player to make a full five stacks on DraftKings, Brandon Marsh or uh, Rojas might be those other bats there. So I'm looking at Wheeler. I'm not looking at Woods Richardson. I'm looking at the Philly bats. I'm not looking at the Twins today. White Sox at the Rangers, Garrett Crochet versus John Gray. Um, I like both of these pitchers. Uh, Garrett Crochet obviously gets a ton of strikeouts. Um, I get that. He's not the best matchup for him. Um, he's 9,800, 150 strikeouts. The problem is, and this is what we saw last time, he was our number one pitcher on July 12th against Pittsburgh. Only went two innings. There, He is on a pitch count for that one. I don't know if he's going to be on pitch count here, which is cr- crazy because he only threw 28 pitches in that game. That tells me I don't know if he's going to be in there. Um, he's got great stuff, but paying 9800 for a guy who just went 28 pitches because they're trying. He's a trade candidate as well. They're, I mean, they're, I don't know. I, I can't pay 2800 for this just because, again, no news is out yet about this. But I, if they pulled him after 28 pitches there, I would not be surprised if they do it again. That's the problem. Then they get into the bullpen, and then that is where I think Texas is a stack that feasts. And this right here, for casual people, they're going to be like, oh, it's Garrett Crochet. He's got great numbers. Let's throw him in there. This is where I want to tell you, this is why we are better than them. We are going to make you a better DFS player. I fully expect Crochet to kind of be on the same pitch count there. Then the bullpen comes in. Then we attack with Texas as a stack. Obviously, Corey Seager batting 262. Um on the year 18 bombs looking at him marcus simeon 14 bombs josh smith 10 bombs bat 280 on the year these are the ones i'm looking at then you know wyatt langford's another one you could look at depending on who else is out there maybe a nate low or a jonah heim to complete that stack but i think everyone's going to be on garrett crochet we know that we got screwed last especially i got screwed last time being 10,300, and then they dropped 28 pitches, and that was it. And he had 22 of 28 pitches or strikes. I don't want any. I'll take a little bit of John Gray against the White Sox because they are so bad. I'm not going to take Crochet. I am taking Texas as a stack here. Brewers at the Cubs. You got Colin Ray versus Jamison Tyon. Now, looking at this, Colin Ray comes in, set 377. He's faced them already twice this year, 10.2 innings. Does have a 1W, 3 earned runs, 13 strikeouts. Tournament-wise, I'm okay with that. Tournaments for Colin Ray, I'm okay. Um, But again, I don't love the matchup, like the pitching in this one, as much. You got Jameson Tyon coming in, though. Um, Doing pretty good, 310 ERA. Has been on the radar to get traded. Like I was saying, a lot of players, chances to get traded. Tyon is one. This was almost a name we named our kid, too, Jameson. Uh, flipped a coin. It Four out of five was this name. And then day of, it absolutely changed to something that wasn't even on the really on the list. But we look at him. He's already faced Milwaukee three times this year. One win, one loss, 18 innings. Six earned runs, four walks, 16 strikeouts. So, yeah, you know, you've got six earned runs, but three starts, that's not a bad... I mean, he, you know, 628 was the last time, gave up four runs, three of them earned. His probably his worst down, three earned run there. So if you could get that, I mean, he had a six inning here with seven Ks. He's getting the strikeouts. He's had success. A little bit scared because, again, he could be traded. Cubs are probably sellers at the deadline, as stated. He would be, I would assume, be one of the top ones to be traded. I saw the Yankees were talking uh, or discussing. Uh, with the Cubs with him, which would be awesome to get a reunion. Loved him in pinstripes. Um, but I will use him here a little bit. Tournaments, I don't know if I trust him in cash enough, but I definitely trust him in tournaments enough. Now, the problem is, what bats are we going to look at in this game? Like, who do we trust? Are we going to go with uh, Cubs bats? I don't know if I'm going to have exposure to this uh, offen- either offense here. I'm probably looking at pitching... Again, I think Tyon is, 
I don't mind him cash or tournaments. I think Ray is tournament only. Maybe these teams go off. I am off of both of these offenses. I'd rather focus and stick with the pitching in this one. Then we get the Diamondbacks at the Royals. We got Jordan Montgomery coming off the IL versus Alec Marsh. For whatever reason, Arizona had the better odds for implied runs total, which I don't know why. Uh, Montgomery has had an abysmal season, set 576 ERA, um, has not pitched in almost a month off that game. Eight runs, four of them earned against Minnesota, who they do hit lefties well. Kansas City can hit lefties well as well. Uh, there's some bad blood in this game. Bobby Wood Jr. was going for the cycle. Um, then Arizona hit him, whether or not it was on purpose, I don't know. Then Kansas City came out and hit him there. Uh, hit the other, ba- uh, Gabriel Moreno there. Then the benches, they didn't really clear. They got a warning, and then the manager got tossed. Uh, Lavillo got tossed. We'll see if there's some hitting here. Uh, Montgomery has not been ideal. He has not pitched well uh, since... Oh, in over a month, I'm probably off of him. I'm looking at Kansas City bats. Bobby Wood Jr. against a lefty I want. Salvador Perez I want. Vinny Pascatino I want. Like we said in yesterday's video, Hunter Renfro could be a cheap option. Did He did play a part in those double-digit runs yesterday. Um, another one I would look at, Michael Garcia. You want to go cheaper? Kyle Isbell, Michael Massey. You're trying to find a stack there. <sighs> Alec Marsh. Um, I don't know what to do with this guy. 7,500, 84 strikeouts, 452 ERA, kind of up there. Um, splits wise, he's not faced Arizona this year. I'm probably not on Marsh. I'm probably on pitch or bats in both of the, like both sides. I loved Kansas City bats a little bit more, but if we are looking for Arizona bats here against right handed pitching, Jock Peterson batting 281 with 12 bombs, I don't mind him. Cattell Marte batting 254 with seven bombs, I don't mind him. Christian Walker actually has, I usually like to take him against lefties, but he's got 18 home runs against right-handed pitching this year. Um, definitely one that I'm looking at. Again, though, this is a pitcher's park, so, but, you know, we saw 10 runs for Kansas City last uh, last night. Corbin Carroll, I don't know if I want him, but maybe tournaments. And then Alec Thomas, I don't mind him to full, you know, complete a stack there. So, I do like both teams. I like the Royals just a little bit more, but I don't mind the Arizona Bats either. And then we got the Red Sox at the Rockies. Cooper Criswell versus Ty Block. I don't want either of these in Coors. Um, both of these guys do actually show up in the pitches be crazy because the opposing teams do strike out a ton. I think for sports betting or for the FanDuel contest, I'm okay with that. But for DFS, I'd rather just look at the Bats. I don't trust either, uh, either here. So, Boston bats against a lefty. Connor Wong batting 319, I would look at. Uh, I would definitely look at Dom Smith batting 278 against lefties. Had a big double in extra innings yesterday, I believe. Um, Tyler O'Neill usually mashes lefties. Would not be surprised to see him go yard, if not multiple different home runs here. Rob Ruff Snyder could be a sneaky option there as well. Uh, 303 batting average with three home runs. And then we look at. Colorado bats against Chris Well. No one's faced him before, but the bats that have success against righties and at home. Uh, Elias Diaz batting 283 with four bombs I'd look at. Ryan McMahon, if he's in there, I believe he sat yesterday. I don't know if he's hurt, but he did sit. Uh, nine home runs, a 263 batting average against lefties. Ezekiel Tovar batting 290 with 10 bombs. Um, then you've got Brenton Doyle, always look at him. And another one might be Jake Cave for a cheap Colorado option here. Then we've got the Astros at the Athletics. Jake Bloss versus Osvaldo Beto. Bloss, I mean, you know, Bloss coming in. He's got a great matchup against Oakland. They do strike out uh, fourth most. It is at home. The problem is he's not going deep into games. He's only pitched twice. It's been a minute since then. Gave two earned runs in those games, Miami and Baltimore. Tournaments I'm okay with, but problem I don't know if he's going to be stretched out. I don't know if he's going to be pitching more. That's what kind of stinks. Um, but again, you know, Astros finally came back first place. Uh, I don't know if I can trust him enough just because I don't think he's going to go deep into games. And then Osvaldo Beto here, kind of the same thing. Uh, one inning, three inning, you're not using him. Um, and it's very hard to know if it's going to be lefty-righty matchup in this one. 
So at the moment, I am just avoiding this game bats wise. Obviously, you know, Jose Altuve um, probably leading off. Wouldn't be surprised if he leads off with a home run. But you know, what Astros bats him? Bregman, Jordan, Singleton. I'm okay with, but I just don't trust the pitching in this game. But if we were to look at like if you think Bloss is not going to have a good game and you want to stack Oakland because you don't think anyone's going to be stacking Oakland. I get that. Um, I would be looking at Kyle McCann batting 308 uh, with four bombs. Zach Geloff only batting 209 but has 10 bombs against righties. Uh, Max Schumann, 271 with four bombs. I don't mind him. Obviously, Brent Rooker's there. Lawrence Butler, Daz Cameron. I don't mind these guys. I think you could sne- be sneaky today with an Oakland stack because I don't think people are going to be thinking about that. Um, but the problem is the bullpens, they're going to come in. It's not going to be these starters for very long, and then really anything can happen there. They could play matchups, three-man, and then leave, and another one come up. So that's the only thing that scares me. When it's basically a certified bullpen game from both sides almost, you never know what you're going to get. Then the Angels at the Mariners, Jose Soriano versus Logan Gilbert. Soriano has a matchup that I would look at for you know, pitching wise, just for pitches be crazy, he has got the best matchup here because Seattle strikes out the most. But you dig into that, you look at him. Where's he at? Am I blind? What am I what am I not seeing? Obviously love Logan Gilbert. Jose Soriano. He's already faced him twice this year. Twelve innings pitched, eight strikeouts. Really not enough. Does have a dub uh, though. So tournaments, I'm okay with him, but that's basically it. And then Logan Gilbert, love Logan Gilbert. Splits-wise, he's already faced him once this year, seven innings, nine strikeouts. Would not be surprised if Logan Gilbert does that exact same thing again. He was our number one pitcher uh, on the 14th before the All-Star break. Seven innings against this exact team, loved him there, nine strikeouts. Would not be surprised if he repeats this again, loved that. 32.6, 32.6, he was under 10K, he is now 10K. Something similar to that, he, they are now at home. I do not mind him at all. We loved him in that Sunday matchup, and he absolutely delivered for us. Wouldn't be surprised if he delivers for us once again here against the Angels coming out of the break. Seattle bats against Soriano. Um, no home runs, uh, but you know ones I would look at. Cal Raleigh, big dumper, look at him. Uh, Rojas, I don't mind. Um, JP, I don't mind. They did just put out Ty France on uh, waivers, which was kind of crazy. Uh, he's doing decent, but I think Bliss is going to be taking over for him. I think. Um, you know, another one, Victor Robles, 316 batting average with one bomb against right handed pitching. I don't mind them. So I am looking at Logan Gilbert, one of my top pitchers. Uh, here, if you don't want to pay 10500 and you don't want to pay 9800 for a crochet, I do like, love Gilbert here against the Angels. I don't love Soriano for DFS, but maybe for pitching purposes, pitches be crazy, I don't mind him. Then the final game, you've got the Jordan Hicks, San Francisco Giants versus Landon Knack. So we see that yesterday. The, up, the Dodgers are very up and down. It, they, it's so crazy. Um, Blake Snell went six innings, didn't do bad, didn't have a ton of strikeouts, had a quality start. Um, and the way the Dodgers are hitting their bullpen, it's crazy. You spend that much one on one guy. Yeah, you lead in the division, but again, what's that going to do towards the playoffs? Um, but you come in, Jordan Hicks, 314 batting average. You know, we look at him. On paper, splits-wise, he's already faced him once this year. Went five innings, only gave up two earned runs, only had four strikeouts. So nothing sexy about that stat line. Uh, the only thing sexy, I guess, is less than three earned runs. Um, but was that at home? Yeah, that was at home, which is a pitcher's park. He is a ground ball guy. The Dodgers are kind of, you know, wishy-washy right now. I don't mind. And then Landon Knack, tournament against the Giants, 4.2 innings, 5 hits, 1 earned run, 7 Ks. Those are great numbers. Didn't go deep into the game. That's what scares me. If you're going to go off of these and you're not going to take a pitcher and you want to look at the bats, Patrick Bailey, uh, Tyro Estrada, I don't mind at all. Tyler Fitzgerald, I don't mind as a cheap option. 
Elliot Ramos batting 250 with eight bombs against righties. I don't mind that either. Dodgers against Hicks. Uh, the only guy who has a home run is Jason Hayward. Um, wouldn't I don't think I'd use him. Freddie Freeman batting 318 with 11 bombs against righties. Um, you could use him. You could use Teoscar Hernandez with 12 bombs. You could use, obviously, Shohei batting 321 against righties with 23 bombs. Um, those would be the ones. You know, Will Smith has also been pretty on fire. Those would be the stacks and the bats that I would use in this game. Probably not using Landon Mack. Maybe use either of them in tournaments, but cash, no way. Not doing that. And there you have it. That is the breakdown of every single game, all of the batters, all of the pitchers. Now, we're going to do pitches be crazy real quick, like we've talked about. Now, these are not necessarily the only ones I would be using, but I want it, these are the top five according to the teams that they are facing who strike out the most. So Jose Soriano is number one. Uh, Seattle strikes out 10.31 times per game. At home, they bat, uh, strike out 10.46 times. Uh, tie block versus Boston. Boston strikes out 9.72 times per game. On the road, they're striking out 10.04, but this is cooler, so that does scare me. Then on the flip side of that, Cooper Criswell against Colorado in Colorado. Colorado strikes out 9.57 times per game. On the At home, though, they only strike out nine times per game, so a little bit less than their average. Then you got Jake Bloss, who I don't know how deep he's going to go into this game, but he gets a matchup in Oakland. They strike out 9.5 times per game, but at home, they only strike out 8.69 times per game. And then the final one is Lance Lynn at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh strikes out 9.1 times per game this year on average. And at home, they're striking out only 8.38. So on the surface, these are great numbers. Uh, they have the best matchups. But then when you look where the games are, the teams that strike out the most are striking out less at home where the matchups are. So if you want to take that for with a grain of salt, I understand. But then you look at the FanDuel situation. Then you see the pitchers that are here. You see what they average. And you can build your lineup from there. So the guys that aren't on this list that I am looking at, Luis Heal, Logan Gilbert, Chris Sale. You could even look at Jameson Tyon. Um, bring it down if you think these other guys are going to do well. You can look at that as well. So um, the games that are here, the pitchers that are there, the list that we gave, not necessarily the ones I'm going to be looking at. Definitely ones that I've talked about we would look at. You could look at Zach Wheeler against Minnesota as well. Um, get a little crazy. Go Jamison Tyon against Milwaukee. I don't mind that either. So that is Pitches Be Crazy. And now, finally, we are going to give you all of the batters that have a 10 out of 10 matchup rating. Some days we've had 31. Some days we've had 3. Today we've got a, a healthy amount. Now, this is all games... These are all batters that have 10 out of 10 matchup rating. So let's go right now. Jaron Duran versus Ty Block. Seiya Suzuki is number two. Number three is Bobby Witt Jr. Number four is Rafi Devers. Five is Isak Paredes. Six, Gunnar Henderson. Seven, Ian Happ. Eight, Adley Rushman. Nine, Andrew McCutcheon. Ten, Freddie Freeman. Eleven, Brian Reynolds. Twelve, uh, Masataka Yoshida. 13, Ryan O'Hearn, 14, Danny Jansen, 15, Anthony Santander, 16, Jordan Alvarez, 17, Luis Garcia, 18, Hunter Renfro, 19, Spencer Horowitz, 20, Gavin Sheets, and 21, Connor Joe versus Lance Lynn. Now, what I love is these run in the background while we do the video. I love when we break down a video, we look at the batters that we like, and then they match and they show up on the 10 out of 10 matchup rating here. Now, I didn't see that when I made when we went through the game by game. So, love to see it when you got correlation there. And, you know, I will have a ton of exposure to Jaron Duran today, uh, Bobby Witt Jr., Gunnar Henderson, um, probably Freddie Freeman, Ryan O'Hearn. Um, stacking, love me a Baltimore stack today. Uh, love me a Kansas City stack today going to have to get some exposure to uh, a Yankees sort of stack and look at, you know, Boston or Colorado or both because it is course. But again, that game is going to be very hard to build a stacks around because a lot of the big guys are highly priced. So you're going to have to find those value picks in those games. So on top of that, if you check out our discord, we're going to have the ballpark factors. We're going to have the projected home run totals there. We're going to have FanDuel and DraftKings core plays 
batters, pitchers, and stacks all there on the Discord. So go check it out somewhere down below in the description. So definitely big shout out to Outlier, our sponsor. Big shout out to everyone who has subscribed. And I know it's a longer video, but good luck to everyone today. And as always, let's bring home some bacon. Peace.